Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we're going to do a super quick, super easy watercolor floral card um, with Zig Clean color markers. So the couple of stamps that I pulled out, you guys know I like more bang for my buck. Um, so I'm using the Mother's Day uh, stamps and dies and then also the Thinking of You. Um, I showed the stamp, I thought I was going to use the stamp, I'm not going to lie, it didn't end up working out the way that I thought it would, so I ended up only using the die, but th just so you know, there are coordinating ones. Here I'm working on Canson watercolor paper, and I have this um, floral border uh, type stamp. I'm going to stamp that down in Versamark ink, and you're about to find out just how often I clean my stamps, which sometimes I'm good about, sometimes I'm bad about. Clearly, in this stamp set, I was bad about it because Versamark is a clear sticky ink, but you're going to see when I stamp it down that it doesn't stamp clear because I didn't clean my stamp. So it kind of reactivated that ink and left a, um, instead of being clear, it was more gray, which honestly is great for the video because then you can see uh, what I stamped, but I'm not worried about it. I'm heat embossing uh, with white embossing powder so it won't make any difference. The white will actually just cover it right up. Now, if I was heat embossing in clear, I would definitely be concerned about it, but using an opaque color um, isn't necessary, like, or it isn't, uh, it isn't a big deal for, like, if you have color on your stamp still, not a huge deal. So I'm going to, um, like I said, heat emboss this in white. I believe this is Simon's Stamp White Embossing Powder. Um, and then I'm just going to heat set this with my um, gun until it is smooth and dry. None of it should look um, powdery or like, like there's gaps in between. It should all be one smooth melted surface. So the reason that I chose this stamp set is because uh, it gives me the look of a masked floral border without me having to do any of the work. I know it's a Mother's Day set, but like I said in the beginning, I like more bang for my buck, so you don't have to use them for just Mother's Day. Not even kind of. You can use them for all kinds of things. So here I'm going to be using my Zig Clean color markers. I'm not going to be doing any Copa coloring. I know you're shocked and probably fell out of your chair and I will give you a minute to collect yourself. Um, but because they're quick and simple and bright and vibrant and that's totally my jam. I love bold colors. I know that there are some people um, who are looking for less vibrant or, or more muted or jewel tones. Um, I would suggest using traditional watercolors, like my Daniel Smiths look like that. But, um, or various colors of distress inks will also work. But because I love the bold color, the zigs are really the fastest way to go for me. I don't have to, um, I don't really have to think about it, honestly. I can just scribble them down. Uh, the video here is sped up to about two times, well, like how long it normally took me. And I think I made this card from start to finish in about 40 minutes, which is why it's only a 15 minute video, because <laughs> I got to cut out all those other parts. So I put down um, some green, some blue, some yellows. Now I'm going in with some pinks and purples and oranges. I will warn you, doing them all at the same time, you have to pay attention to where you put the color because complementary colors make brown. So if I let my green and my pink mix, I'm kind of risking it. If I let my purple and my yellow mix, um, mix, why was that a hard word to say? Uh, I'm kind of risking it. But I really like when all of my colors kind of blend together. I'm not a, I guess I'm not a clean watercolorist. There, I, I can do it. It just takes, oh my gosh, like years, just so many years. I sounded Canadian there for a minute. Um, but technically I am French Canadian. Can, my maiden name was Trebeau, uh, which is very French. Um, but anyway, here where I got like the the green just kind of got out of control. I wasn't really, I was rushing. Um, so I wasn't paying a ton of attention. I wanted there to be some pink that kind of bled over into the edges since I am going to be die cutting it. Uh, I know that those edges are going to show and I wanted to make sure that they had, most of the areas had some color on it. Um, so I just blotted that up wherever it, like the color got that I didn't want it. I just used a clean paper towel. It picks up pretty clean and then I can go in and uh, put the other colors, spread them out where I wanted. You'll see when we do the other side um, that, that I forgot to put in any orange. And so these the borders, even though they're going on the same card, didn't look like they matched. 
This one was much more heavily purple and blue and they just didn't look like they made friends. Uh, so I'll use that little like soak up trick where I blot up the color um, so I can put some orange into my flowers so they do look like a little bit more matchy matchy. The other thing that I really love about the Zig Clean color markers is once they're dry you can go in with another layer and it will totally intensify the color which is awesome. Um, so usually I end up doing it twice but you don't have to. If you're happy with the way your first layer looks, then that's cool. Like, go with that. You don't have to do it the way that I do it. That's what's fun about uh, techniques like this. Um, you could be much more clean about it. You can, Zig Clean Color Markers will blend with each other without water, so you wouldn't even have to do the, the paintbrush part. But since I know that I'm going to be um, die cutting these out the edges to me don't so much matter as long as enough of it is covered on the outside edge um that i don't have a just a pure white edge when i do the die cutting so um it is sunday night i just got home from a 40 weekend which was amazing um eric's parents have a cottage up on lake michigan and so we left um, on Thursday evening and went up there for a couple of days. Uh, it was super awesome. His family is wonderful. Uh, we had great weather, like just glorious, beautiful weather. I actually got some, a little bit of color. Uh, Eric jokingly calls me Casper and really, honestly, it's not that far off. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty pale in the winter. Um, so got to go up there and hang out. Uh, Molly came with us and she just loved every minute of it because they totally spoiled the daylights out of her. Um, we were kind of laughing because <laughs> Eric's mom, um, Molly's very finicky. Okay. She's just, she's a fickle little dog and she has a little bit of anxiety, which makes her kind of perfect to be my dog. Right. Um, and so she wasn't really eating. Not that she was like starving by any means, but she wasn't eating like she would if we were at home. And so to entice her to eat a little bit, we thought maybe we would put some peanut butter in her food. And Eric's mom was like, I got it, I'll do it. And like we're watching her scoop this peanut butter out of the jar and Eric and I, like our eyes meet and we're both like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that might be a little too much peanut butter. That might be a little bit crazy. Um, and then she's like, no, I gotta, you know, I gotta mix it in there so it gets all over it. And then she's like letting Molly lick the spoon. Molly's in seventh heaven. Um, so we were kind of giggling a little bit about that. Molly got her first boat ride. They have a pontoon boat and, uh, which was wonderful to just ride around the lake. I was a little bit nervous because I do get motion sickness. Um, but I didn't really notice it on the boat. And so that worked out really well. Molly did great because she does not like water. Um, one, like a, a long, long time ago when we first uh, got her, we tried to take her into the lake and she totally panicked and thought she was drowning and now she won't do the water thing at all. Um, but she did great on the boat and we had previously taken her in a canoe and she did awesome in that as well. So apparently as long as she will be out on the water, as long as her body doesn't have to touch the water, then we're good. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was super nice. Uh, they do have a jet ski, which is like Eric's favorite thing in the world to do. Uh, and not so much for me. Not that I've never been on one. I have, um, but I have some, <laughs> basically I told Eric, I'm like, this is trust issues basically. Um, cause I don't trust you not to drive like a maniac and just scare me to death. Um, which honestly, I do think he would probably be good about it, but I know that that's kind of like his time to clear his head. So I want him to have that too. Um, yeah, so just really good. I didn't do any work outside of typing up one blog post while I was away. So my apologies for the week long gap um, because I know that you guys look forward to the videos and I'm so grateful that you do. But I also know that you guys are in my court as far as um, letting me have a little bit of a break as well. So this was a little bit of break time for me. Um, no regal word on like what we're doing going forward with the puppy at the moment. As soon as I have more news about that, I will surely let you know. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much pretty much what I've been doing with my life. Fourth of July come out of next weekend or next week. So I'm excited about that because I get to see my family. And that's pretty much I think the only thing that I have planned coming up. Um, 
I have other stories to tell you, but I don't have enough time to tell you in just this one. So uh, anyway, back to the um, the card here. So I'm done with the watercoloring. I am like dried it all down. And then I basically spattered on some Perfect Pearls. I thought I also did regular droplets. Now I made this card like five days ago, y'all. So I'm trying to remember. I thought I did regular droplets, but clearly watching the video back, I must not have. Um, but I just wanted to, there to be some shine and I think Perfect Pearls are super pretty on watercolor. Uh, if you do the Perfect Pearls while it's still wet, it's going to spread everywhere. Um, but if you do it while it's dry, it'll just leave the speckles. Here, because I'm a firm believer in telling you all of the things, this is where the stamping did not work out. So originally my game plan was to do like a bluish green watercolor background. I'm just blotting up the edges there so that I don't have um, like a weird outer edge. But so I um, am doing that and I was, my game plan was so that it would look cohesive. So I would have like some of the green edges from the flowers and then I would have this stamped sentiment on like this watercolor greenish blue background. But I didn't, first and foremost, I didn't love the background. Uh, you, that's why I'm, I'm showing it to you, but I'm showing it to you at like four times the speed. Um, just so you could see, in case you really did like it, uh, how I got where I was. Um, but I didn't like it. It was just, it, it was not what I was looking for. And you'll be able to see it before we move on to the actual finished card. So I'm just going to heat set this and then I'm going to do this part. I know I did the, the clean water spatters. That's the here, this part. And then I'm going to blot it up with a paper towel and then um, do the same thing with the perfect pearls. Um, just spatter that on um, so that there was some shine in the background and they were, like I said, kind of matchy matchy. I'm going to dry that down, dry down the flowers and then here's the stamping part. So I picked, I stamped it in Ocean Drive from W plus nine, which is like a deep uh, green color. It's really, really pretty. And because it matched the green and the leaves that I did on the flowers, I thought that would be a good choice. Might've been a hair too much green. I'm not positive. Um, but so I stamped it twice because I'm stamping on watercolor paper and you know, it's hard sometimes to get a good impression, but that's the joy of the, the Misty. So here is how it would have looked. I didn't like it. It covered up too much of the flowers. So instead what I did was I used the die cut for the thinking of you. I'm just going to glue these down flat onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. That's what my card uh, base is made out of. And then the thinking of you, what I did was I cut out two in white and one in black. And that's just, um, I'm going to glue them all together because intricate dies like this it's really a pain to do like the tedious little foam pieces this is a much easier way to get some dimension on your um, intricate die cut sentiments or I mean really any intricate die cuts you could just stack them up together like this I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue but you can use I know um, like Jennifer and Christina use the Ranger Multimedia Mat because it uh, dries where it's not shiny so that is, you know, something else that's an option. There's a lot of other ones. Gina k has got one out that's good. Lawn Fawn, um, the tinier glue. But because I use Tombow Mono Multi Glue for everything else, it just makes sense for me to keep using this. I would use the other ones if, you know, I had them or if I needed them in a pinch, that wouldn't be a problem. I would totally use them. I have tried them in the past and they are very good glues. I just like this one because it's repositionable. So once I get all three of them um, lined up and put together, I will do that for all of them, the, the thinking of you, all, all the little die cut pieces. And that maybe took me, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Um, and then once those are done, I'm going to glue them down directly to the card. I don't need to put, put foam tape behind them because like we just talked about, that's why we did all of the stacking. Um, and I'm going to adhere the thinking at a little bit of an angle. I think it adds a little bit of interest and then it allows me to kind of tuck the of you um, up in there uh, where like the G comes down and make it um, like the design a little bit tighter, which is just how I prefer my designs when I am doing a card. I like my sentiments to kind of be tucked into my focal point. I don't typically... Um, you know, put a design in a bottom right-hand corner and, and the sentiment in the top left-hand corner. 
here um, the next thing that I did was I used uh, these this is called back to basics um, honeybee has a bunch of different color enamel dots this one is the black and white one that's the back to basics I thought the black ones would look awesome right next to it um, like I said I was rushing these were super quick and easy they stuck really well and then I'm using just some clear glitter to go over the black letters because I love, 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 love the way that looks. Um, and then if there even sometimes like where I'll trap it underneath some glossy accents, but I didn't this time. Speaking of glossy accents, I used that to just kind of highlight the berries since they're the same color as all of the flowers. This just adds, um, you know, a little extra something to make them kind of pop forward. And then honestly, that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will be back soon with other cards. I've got two videos in the hopper that I need to edit. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.